Hello and welcome to another Illuminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to capture beautiful street photography. And I have a very special guest today who is also a Skylum ambassador. Please welcome Darlene. Hello, Darlene. Hi. Let me pull you up one moment. <laughs> there we go. All right, one second, Darlene. Skype is giving us a little issue. All right, let me pull it up one second. Technology's great when it works. <laughs> yep. Well, Darlene, um, while it's right now, you're not up. Oh, here we go. Um, I have your screen. Just one moment. And here we are. There we go, Darlene. I got you now. All Yay. Right, so <laughs> talk to us a little bit about street photography. Um, how do you capture, how do you capture some of these shots you're about to show us are just absolutely amazing. And sure. You know, it didn't just happen by luck. What did you do to capture them? So I picked some of these images for different reasons. Um, some of my favorite places for doing street photography are Cuba, India, and uh, New York City, which I didn't select any from, uh, for this particular set. But the first one I want to talk about is from, from Cuba. Oops, that's not Cuba. Got the wrong one. There we go. Um, now my my thing's doing fun. Okay, so first one is from Cuba. How I approached photography in Cuba, there's lots and lots of things that are interesting there to photograph that are different than our own streets that we might walk at home. Number one is the old cars. Everybody wants to get shots of the old cars in Cuba. So this is one approach that I took that was a little bit different. So I decided I was going to do panning. Um, this is shot on the Melicon in Havana which runs alongside the oceanfront and people come to just hang out. So I did panning and I think I might have the information. Yes. So I shot this, um, at a 30th of a second on shutter priority. So when I'm doing panning, I switched to shutter priority and I probably took about 20 or 30 shots to get one that I was happy with. Right. So I change all my settings so that I'm shooting in burst mode. I take a few shots and the key with panning is you have to move the camera the same speed and direction that the subject is moving. So in this case, the car was moving from right to left. My camera was moving from right to left as I shot, you know, five or six pictures and the guy happened to look at me. Uh, which is great. So this was my favorite one of this series. But when I was standing on the street, I probably took, like I said, 20 or 30. So panning is is a, a way to do some street photography. You're going to blur the background and get the subject that's moving in sharp focus. So I love to do that with, with cars, and that worked really well for the cars from Cuba in this instance. Let me get my film strip here. So the other car that I shot in Cuba was a stationary one, which is coming up. There we go. So another typical street. This is in more in central Havana. People hanging out on the street. You'll see all kinds of things. You might see a cart selling vegetables and various other things. Um, I'm going to process this one in a little bit as well. But this is kind of just showing the different approaches between, you know, shooting the traffic and the cars in a stationary manner, getting some of the scenery and the street scene and the people and what's going on behind. Um, and you can see this one is actually a taxi, which is yeah, really cool. Yeah, I like how you capture that because if you had you just taken a picture of the cat taxi, you zoomed in. It doesn't tell a story. Right. Here, I love all the extra you added to this. Um, and, and my eye goes right down the street to the people, you know, and I, you can see, you know, um, their lifestyle. Exactly. And anybody who's been to Cuba, no, this is so typical, right? This is, this is super typical Havana, specifically. Um, something else I like to incorporate into my um, street photography is I look for things that are humorous or interesting and um, capturing that moment, right? So you mentioned, well, um, uh, actually, when we were off air, we, we talked about the decisive moment. So anybody that's listening, if you've not heard that phrase before, it was something that was coined by uh, famous photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson. If you're not familiar with that, Google the decisive moment. Um, he actually believed that when you're shooting street photography, and some of his street photography is it, some of the most famous you'll possibly see. You may not know it's his, but you've probably seen some of his images, um, like the man jumping over the puddle and so on. He believed that you shoot at the peak of action. So, you know, for example, the man jumping over the puddle is in midair. 
And in this case, I wanted to include humor. So anybody that knows Spanish um, will get the humor here. This was shot in Varanasi, India. So first thing you have to know is that cows are everywhere in India because they're sacred. So they roam the streets. In this particular case, they are, they're tied up near somebody's home. So that's their cows. And the sign across the street says La Vaca. Um, it's a hostel, but it, literally in, in Spanish, why they have a Spanish sign, I have no idea, <laughs> <laughs> in Varanasi, but it means the cow, right? So I saw the humor in that, and I framed it with the cow sort of going around that that sign um, and waited for the man to go past. So I look for things like that that, to me, um, have an element of humor involved as well. Well, that's great. And... For me, uh, most of my street photography is going to involve and include people, right? So when I'm traveling, um, obviously none of us are doing that right now. Even if you're photographing um, street photography in your own ho in your own hometown right now, capture the people because it's daily life that will tell you what what this place is all about, right? So this was shot on the street in Granada, Nicaragua, and this man is a newspaper vendor. And what is he doing? But reading the newspaper, right? <laughs> so I thought that was rather apropos. And I like to capture, um, I spent a lot of time uh, in Nicaragua and, and lived in Granada for several months. So I got a real sense of what daily life is like, people and come and go. Um, and he's set up about half a block away from a major market. So everybody's coming to the market and he's selling them a paper as they're on their way or as their way on their way home or on their way to the market right so that's the thing to do there you know you buy a paper you go sit on your stoop and you have your coffee or your beer and you read the paper <laughs> it's amazing that's what I love about about seeing different places in, in the world. You know, um, like this man is was photographed in Fez in Morocco, um, and he's a metalwork, uh, metalworker artist, right? So he makes these copper pots and things that you see up um, behind him. And he was uh, gracious enough. I, I was there with my tour group, and he was great gracious enough to allow us to photograph him for several minutes. Um, we probably stopped for about 20 minutes. So. That's the other aspect of street photography that I like to address with my students is that there's kind of the candid element and then there's the, okay, he knows that I'm photographing him and he's given his approval, like in this case, verbally, because we had a guide and a translator, but you can get nonverbal approval, even if you don't speak the language of the country that you're in. Like I don't speak Arabic or Hindi. Um, my, my Spanish is pretty good, so I can ask permission when I'm in a Spanish speaking country, but I sure don't speak Arabic, right? So... You can ask for permission with your eyes. You can point to your camera. You, you know, use use and, hand gestures. That, that's the key, like you just said. You, you're you're asking permission, because again, it's one of those special moments. We were in um, Mexico, and a whole group of us were were near a church, and you could tell this guy just sitting there. Just he looked so somber. The way the light was hitting him, it was a perfect photo. But I looked at him. He looked at me and shook his head. No. And so I told everyone, do not take photos of him. Right. Sure enough, he just lost his best friend the day before. Oh, yeah. And he was there, you know, in, in a somber moment. That's not the time to take a photo. Right. So, and like that's said, the other thing about respecting people, right? So if they say no, absolutely respect their decision and don't do it. And they might say no with their eyes. They might say no with their, their finger, you know, hand gesture, like no, 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 or, you know, something other, <laughs> another kind of gesture, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, this, this man clearly is saying yes, right? So here we have the other side of the coin. And um, if, if, if anyone is ever afraid of doing street photography, go to India, I, I will tell you, like people jump in front of your camera. Like if you're worried about photographing strangers and offending them, <laughs> you will offend the people in India if you don't take their picture. I'm not kidding. Like they just absolutely love to have their photo taken. Um, these were some guys that were, you know, at the barber shop, and this guy was sitting there, you know, waiting for somebody to come and have their hair cut. And as we were going by, one of the guys in our group is from England, and he commented on what big muscles <laughs> he had. So uh, we were all joking about he was my uh, co-tour leader and uh, we were all joking about what big muscles, you know, our friend Cav has. And this guy was was great and in interacting with us. I think he wanted to practice his English too. So that's what I mean by like there's people will say, okay, I can use a long lens and photograph across the street and take the sneak shot. 
right? Or you can get in, in close and do things like this where you're, you're engaging with people. And I prefer this type of street photography where I get close and I'm engaging with people. Um, and I have another couple of examples of that where this next one is a lady that we came across that was just sitting in, in her home and she was doing some cooking and she literally, you know, said, come, come, come. Like she dragged us over to come and take her photo in her kitchen, right? So she wanted to be photographed and then she's very happy for, for us to take her picture. She likes to see it. And I love the interaction and the smile on her face. Like we made her day by taking her picture. What a simple thing, right? To do. Well, that's awesome. Now, uh, um, <laughs> editing street photography, you have a unique, like that, that car, for example, you have mm -hmm. a, a unique approach to it. I do. Um, I applied a couple of neat things. And this one here with this Indian man was another case of we, we photographed him on the street for quite a while. He was literally just sitting outside a shop smoking and um, I've come in so tight to get rid of the background so that I'm just seeing his face. Let me go back to the car. Well, that's kind of a funky little uh, processing thing there. Okay, let me go back to the Cuban car. Okay, so how I like to process my street photography is I like to give it a bit of a grunge look, um, particularly this one from Cuba, because it's got like a lot of um, old feeling to it, right? I mean, just by going to Cuba, you're going to get some of that. So I love to use AI structure. I'll usually bring that up a little bit. So I'm going to take that to, let's say, 34. Um, I like to do some detail enhancing. So I like to do medium details. I usually go about 25 or 30. And if I wanted to keep the background um, less detail-y, less sharp, um, I will use my mask to mask it so that it only is applying to the areas that I want it to. And I'm going to use for creative processing on this one, which is I think where you were going with this one, I added some film grain. Okay, so first of all, the film grain gives it, again, that old look like a 70s. So I'm kind of thinking I want to go for a 70s kind of look here. So I kind of have in my head ahead of time the style that I want to to do for this image and then I'll just play around with the different filters that go with that style for me film grain is going to work definitely for a 70s type of style and a lot of the street photography that I, I process I will apply the dramatic filter right because it gives me um sort of a not completely black and white look but a faded type of black and white look so I've applied it using 32 amount and the brightness and the saturation were so they're, they are where the factory set them, right? And if you want sort of like darken it a little bit, you can play with the brightness, you can increase the brightness. But I kind of like that partially desaturated look that goes along with that 70s feeling that I'm looking for. So I'm already getting close um, with the style that I'm going for. Let's see a before and after here. So color image, close. Here's the after. And then the next thing I'm going to apply is a color style or a LUT. And I've, play, and I've played around with this one already, and I know that there's a couple that look really good on this image. So the color style or the lookup table, um, if you hover your mouse over, it will give you a preview of what that, is, that particular LUT's going to look like. And like I said, I'm looking for one that gives me sort of a 70s style, like a faded. So the Los Angeles one, I like. If I hit one you like, let's tell me and I'll stop. Now, you know, uh, I think I like through look right now. I'm not sure if the screen froze, but let me let me try one thing. One second. I'm going to switch back. To I'm looking through the LUTs. Yep. Yeah. So right now you're putting the LUTs on, right? Yeah. So yeah, I was so scrolling I'm, through I'm not the LUTs. That. Um, let me see if I could ref, ref, refresh your screen one moment. Okay. Um. All right. Yeah, could you move your mouse for a moment just so I can see? Oh, there you go. Okay, we got it. Yep, there it goes. Got it? Yep. Okay, so I was scrolling through these different lots. Um, the first one I picked was the Los Angeles one. Uh, but let's see if there's any others that you like. Oh, I like that. So I love how the LUTs ties everything together. It does. Uh, Kodachrome is another one that might work well. My cursor thing is kind of giving me... Fits. How about let's try Kodachrome? Okay, so Kodachrome is an old film, right? So oh, nice. giving me that sort of lower contrast, uh, uh, 
lower saturation look. Um, I might even go in here and apply. And the matte look is funky. Um, I like this one because you to apply sort of a color toning or almost split toning in here. I'll increase the matte look and a fade. And then I'll go in here and I'll do a color. Um, so I like sort of maybe like a sepia background. Oh, I'm giving it a little bit of an, a yellow base as well. Let my processor catch up. And so I'm kind of going for that, that heavily grunge look. It's a little bit more contrast than I want. Let's dial the contrast down. So to me, that looks like something that I would have actually shot on Kodachrome or on an old style film. Okay, so if we like this look, it as uh, so let's save it as on my other window street. Let's call it Kodachrome. Kodachrome look. So I'm going to save that, and then I can apply that to any of my other street photography and have the same style applied to it. So let's take that one once it saves. It's not saving. There we go. Let's take that one and apply it to this one of this guy. Let's see how that looks. So I haven't done any processing on this guy. This is basically the original image. And I'm and just going to wait for the screen to catch up. There we go. We got it. Got okay. it. Okay. Reading the, newspaper. So, reading the newspaper. I'm clicking on the look. It's applying. I think between Skype and broadcasting. Yes. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we all oh, wow, look at that. Right. I know if I want, I can just dial it down right from the look and just scale that down a little bit so it's not so. And, and what's deep by scaling it from. from Lower the amount where you are right there, it mm -hmm. takes every tool everything. and lowers it at the same value. Everything. Yeah, I really like that. Um, and if you go back to your layers, it's actually just doing the same thing here, right? Exactly. So if I'm on my layer, it's giving me the same effect as if I'm dialing down everything, right? So I can go one by one and say, oh, no, I don't want as much grain, or I can just dial everything down, right? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens if we apply it on this guy. This one I apply, um, I processed a few different times and um, I love giving him a really uh, detailed sort of uh, increase the, the clarity or the, the haze because he's got so much character in his face and I want to bring that out. So I'm going to try the same street look and see how that applies. Catch up. There we go. And it's processing. It's like watching the microwave, right? And again, it's faster when we're not broadcasting and chewing up precious, oh, that's really nice, precious resources. So this one I might scale the dramatic look back because I want him to have a bit more color um, and then just do some tweaks. So I might start with the preset and say, okay, I'm, I like that, um, what's happening in some of the areas, but I'm going to scale it back just on this one filter and I can do that. Or maybe I don't like this particular matte look. I can just undo it or reset it. I just click the little back arrow. Um, or maybe I want to pick a different lot for him. Okay. Maybe he needs um, one of the portrait ones. Let's go down in here under the portrait ones and see what he looks like for one of those. So you can use one of the looks as a starting point and then just tweak it to your liking. Okay. Well, that's great. We need a deli one for him. <laughs> Let's try something like that. Okay. Um, the other aspect of street photography that I, I wanted to just show them as a, I'll just go back to my thumbnails here, and I'm not going to show each single one, but these men on the street, you can sort of see that there's various different iterations of this shot, and another huge important part of street photography is patience, right? So I started off with three guys, uh, let me see if I can make my thumbnails bigger, started off with three guys, and then a couple more guys came, and I was waiting for, you know, this guy to not have his butt in the camera. Uh, and then this guy was blocking some of the guys in the back. And the shot that I ended up with was one that I really like. It's one of my favorites from from Old Delhi. Um, it's just these guys hanging out and they're all they're all like looking at cell phones or are hanging, you know, checking out their cell phone or their text. I have no idea if they're playing a game or anything, but I just like the way they all sort of lined up. But I didn't get that for my first shot. I had to wait. Um, 
and for them to sort of get into place or stop blocking, you know, the others. So when you're doing street photography, I often will find a scene or a, a lighting is perfect or a background that's interesting. And I'll wait for somebody or something like a bicyclist or a lady with an umbrella and my, my other shot to come into the scene to complete it. Right. So patience is a huge thing for our street photographers. Well, that's great. Let, let me answer a question that Juan had. Uh, um, Juan had. Uh, his question was about, is there a way to import LUTs in the Luminar 4 so you don't have to search for them you know, when you want to see them? As of right now, no. What I'd recommend is you could create a bunch of looks with that LUTs in it, your favorite LUTs, um, and then you just click on that, and now your LUTs is automatically added. But as of Perfect. right now, yeah, you have to go through each and every one of those. Perfect. So, Well, hey, Darlene, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking your time out and sharing your knowledge on street photography. Hopefully we're able to get back out on the street and back in the world soon and back photographing. You got it. Well, thanks again. Well, hey, thanks, guys, Benelli. I'm Benelli. And, and by the way, I do want to give a shout out to our partner, Fuji Film. Thank you so much for helping sponsor these episodes. Fuji, <clears throat> Fuji reminds us, stay safe, stay home, and be creative. Once again, thank you so much for watching our Luminar Coffee Hour or Coffee Break. We'll see you next time.